Hi everyone and welcome to another Flight Deck to Sim tutorial. In today's video, I'll be demonstrating how to fly a GLS approach in the Zebo Mod 737 in X-Plane 11. We'll start off by having a brief look at the GBAS and GLS systems, the advantages of flying a GBAS approach, and then I'll demonstrate how to fly a GLS approach into Bremen in Northern Germany. So you might be asking, what on earth is a GLS approach? Well, a GLS approach, or GBAS landing system, is a GNSS GPS based approach which uses a GBAS ground station to transmit data via something called VDB to a suitably equipped aircraft so it can accurately fly a precision approach. Now in the 737, you'll need to have a multi-mode receiver and this system is able to process this information to the order flight director system for either the pilot or autopilot to follow. So a GLS based approach has several advantages in comparison to an ILS. It isn't subject to any interference like an ILS, so there's no need to have any protected area around the runway whilst the LVPs are in force. It also allows for more complex approaches to be designed. It also provides a precision approach to a runway which might not be necessarily suitable for an ILS. It could also be used to auto land, so although it might operate it, that isn't approved. Um, only one GPS ground station is needed on the ground and that could be used for multiple runways and approaches and for us guys it's really simple for the pilots. The PFD indications of the procedures are exactly the same as an ILS. Now I'm not going to go into much detail exactly how a GLS installation works, you can find that information readily available online, but what I am going to do today is show you how to set up and fly a GLS approach in the 737. So just holding to the north of Bremen, Echo Delta Delta Whiskey in Germany, we're all pretty much ready for the approach books. We just need to set it up uh, for GLS Zulu Runway 27 into Bremen. So if I bring up here the Jefferson chart kindly provided here by Navigraph, you can see right at the top of the briefing strip the usual format displays, but instead of an ILS frequency, uh, we have a GBAS channel frequency to tune, and that channel is 21168. So that's why you need to have the multi-mode receiver, so you can actually input this information. So let's put that in now, 21168. Make that active, 21168. And also on the first officer side, and if we have a look here on the PFD, yes, you can see we have Golf 27 Bravo, which is the correct identifier, the course of 266. We also have uh, distance from the threshold as well, which is really useful. And you can also see uh, we have GLS associated on the PFD. So we're pretty confident it's already been tuned and identified at this stage. Uh, next on the briefing strip, we have the approach courses. 266, 266 is set on the MCP as we would do with any other approach. We have the minimum altitude at Rogbo at 3,000 feet to intercept the, the uh, virtual glide path. You can see here it is Rogbo at 3,000 feet. The minimums, it's a decision altitude just like you would have at a Cat 1 ILS. So this is still uh, susceptible to cold temperature error. So you need to make cold temperature corrections to this. Uh, that is 214 feet, which is set on the, the uh, minimums here. And the airport elevation, 14 feet. Uh, we could just put sea level here on the overhead panel. And the rest of the briefing is just as we'd usually do it. So on the MSA, we confirm it's 2,100 feet. Uh, you can also see on the chart, GPS is required. So if we had any issues with uh, the ability to pick up GPS, we'd be unable to fly the GLS approach because the ground base station and the aircraft does need GPS for that to work. Aircraft must be capable and certified for GLS Cat 1 approach operations, which it is. The crew also need to be qualified as well. Um, the rest of the briefing strip can see there's a transition via Delta Whiskey 550 but we're going to get vectors towards Rockbo from the north today as well and the standard missed approach it's climb on 266 to Delta Whiskey 560 and a left turn direct to Delta Whiskey 561 and then we're going to route direct to the Bremen VOR climbing to 3000 feet so we'll put 117.45 you can see it's already on standby uh, for the approach as well. Just before I forget as well, don't forget you select the correct approach in the FMC2. So make sure when you select arrivals, you select the correct approach. So in this case, GLS Zulu Runway 27. Otherwise, it won't be the correct approach to fly. And also on the init ref page, you can see the correct frequency for the GLS to tune and the identification and the courses. And that's the only information the aircraft needs uh, to fly a GLS approach accurately. So I'm only going to briefly look at it today, but I want to do a tutorial on how to calculate landing performance. But uh, here it is. We already have the performance landing based off the weather conditions. Um, we're going to use the full runway length to vacate at the end in Bremen at uh, Alpha. So we'll use order brake 2 today, and that's using flap 30. That's going to give us 1,700 meters right to the end of the runway. I've already calculated our landing weights being around 59.2. Uh, there's flap 30. 
order break to selected and we'll select second d10 reverse to vacated alpha right we're now inbound to gibma so uh, you can meet me on the approach under self-positioned radar vectors and we'll fly the gls approach into braven So the Imagine ATC has told us uh, Alpaca 01, uh, make a left turn heading 120 degrees. Initial vectors for the GLS Zulu approach here into Bremen. So we've just got a heading select here. And don't forget to exit the hold in the flight management computer. The easiest way to do to that, uh, do that is just to route to the next active waypoint and then execute. Don't engage LNAV though in this case because we're under radar vectors. And uh, whilst we're also here, I'll uh, just remind you a neat little trick if you want to create a waypoint in the flight management computer. We want to make a little base waypoint here off Rogbo uh, just so it looks a little bit better in the FMC. So if I go here to Rogbo... Uh, we'll put 360 radial on a distance of around 4 miles, uh, bring that to the top, and then Rogbo, we can execute here, and you can see in the waypoint, look, that wasn't too bad at all, we've made a nice little waypoint straight ahead of us, and we could utilise VNAV perhaps on the initial part of the descent there. So imagine we've also got our descent clearance down to 3000 feet, so that's set, and just going to select vertical speed and 500 feet per minute uh, next thing we'll do is just prior to the created waypoint here is go flap one and we'll start reducing the speed to 180 knots for the base turn So approaching uh, 3,000 feet here, we could start slowing down. So I'm going to select flaps 1 and match the flap 1 speed. It's going to give us a little bit above 180 knots, 184 knots for now. We'll imagine we've been cleared to descend down to 2,500 feet. And we'll just maintain this heading for a short while longer. I'm also going to now go to flap 5 uh, just so we can make the IKEA recommended speed of 180 knots for our base, uh, base turn. There's flap 5, green light, just approaching 180 knots. Uh, we'll give ourselves our heading of around, a heading of around 180 degrees uh, for base leg. Now, Rogbo is at 3,000 feet but we're under radar control. We'll intercept the, the uh, glide slope from below. Remember, uh, this isn't an ILS glide slope. This is a glide slope based off... Uh, you know, GPAS information, uh, but that's the whole idea. It's meant to be a, a virtual glide path for us to follow and uh, for the aircraft to intercept. And we'll also further tighten that turn now for our intercept heading. We'll give ourselves a nice short final of around uh, 220 degrees. We'll match the flat 5 speed and we'll imagine that we've been cleared approach. And there's nothing different to a normal ILS, guys. You arm approach, all the indications and FMAs are the same. Vorlock armed, glide slope as well. It's the whole idea behind this to keep it nice and simple and familiar to an ILS for the pilots. So there's the runway just off to the right hand side. Approach is armed. You can see we're almost on the glide slope here and the localizer from the GPAS ground station. This information is pre presented, as I just said, uh, on the PFD as a normal ILS approach. Any second now, here it comes. So there's a localizer, a live localizer capture and glide slope capture. So we can set runway heading as per usual, which is uh, runway 266. And just verify the missed approach altitude, which is 3000 feet. And it's set on the MCP. And there you go, guys. It looks all very uh, familiar now. We have uh, MCP, speed, vorlock, and glide slope. And this is a ground-based navigational system uh, communicating uh, to the multi-mode receiver all the information to the flight director system and to the FMAs uh, to make it look like an ILS. And we'll just now continue to a uh, normal landing. So approaching four miles, we'll select gear down, flap 15, match speeds, and then we'll complete the landing checklist to flap start switches. Our uh, continuous recall is checked. Speed brake, arm green lights, landing gear, down through green. Uh, order brake set to two. We can select our landing flap, which is flap 30 today. And that's matched the speeds. And uh, there we are. So we have flaps. We've got a 30 required. 
and uh, Ferdy selected with the green lights and we'll imagine we clear to land as well check this complete as well so you can see here look we're bang on the localizer glide slope from the g pass system it's slightly offset I think that might be a little thing with perhaps how uh, GLS works in X-Plane 11 it should be pretty accurate get you pretty much right on the extended center line I'll have a chat with Zebo as to why that's not quite straight but you can perhaps practice yourselves on one of the many GLS approaches available in the simulator right so all stable so we'll disconnect the autopilot and disconnect the auto throttle it's now my aircraft and uh, target thrust around uh, our weight around 59 tons we're around 57 percent here and yeah you can continue to follow the flight directors all the way down to the ground so but again uh, if it looks like they're not providing accurate information uh, make sure you look outside again in, in real reality having flown one GLS approach into Malaga it was incredibly accurate all the way down to the minimum so it looks pretty uh, bang on now to be fair right so we're fully stabilized 500 feet AGL the first officer will be calling continue oh, slightly okay. increased our rate of descent gap we'll get back onto the vertical profile uh, this scenery uh, very nice here Bremen FSDG scenery and uh, just checking our speed there that's checked and uh, keep it descending now 200 minimums and continue looking good over the threshold around uh, 50 feet back on the center line 50 40 30 20 check 10 close hold the attitudes just in the touchdown zone. Oh look, I forgot to turn it off. Nice button. <laughs> Speed breaks up, reverses. Uh, using runner to maintain sense line. Uh, 100 knots. Manual braking. And 80 knots. And here comes 60 knots. There's idle reverse. And ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Bremen. Alright guys, that's the end of the GLS approach tutorial. I hope you found that interesting and learned something new. Uh, go give it a try in the Zebo mod. The MMR, the ability to fly GLS approaches has been there for a while. Uh, approaches in Europe you have available. Malaga, Frankfurt, Zurich and of course here in Bravian. Uh, don't forget to smash the thumbs up button. Subscribe to stay up to date with the latest content. And I'll see you for another Flight Deck to Sim tutorial or live stream very soon. Bye bye for now.